Back to Houston Newsmakers, where the next two segments will deal with some segments uh, related to the aviation industry. In this segment, we're talking about the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals and the annual conference that's actually taking place here in the Houston area this coming week. Joining me this morning, Captain Robert Monroe. He's the chair of the conference, Captain United Airlines. And also Dr. Terrence Fontaine, who is the director of aviation at Texas Southern University. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. You know, it's, um, it's a 42nd annual conference that's a long time this organization has been around for a long time yes it is what is the primary goal of the organization well the primary goal of the organization actually we're a nonprofit organization <laughs> so uh, we try to instill and inspire young especially minorities uh, what we concentrate on and to looking at the field of aviation mm -hmm. and possibly becoming pilots. Uh, we have expanded over the years. Uh, we used to concentrate mostly on pilots, but now we're looking at the complete aviation aerospace engineering uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be uh, an engineer, astronaut, air traffic controllers, maintenance, uh, we cover the whole gamut. And you got it, the conference, this, we, I looked at this, there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on, mentioned. yes it is. What kinds of things are going on that people can know about? Well, there's several. We, we actually cover from basically the 12-year-old uh, age group up through teenagers, through the college, uh, people who are just now getting into the aviation, up to people who are trying to now get into the major airlines uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the, uh, the second day, which is this coming Thursday, a youth day, which where we're taking 200 kids in the local area. Uh, and basically, it's going to just be a career day for them. Uh, they'll come out to the uh, hotel uh, segment. We're going to have the Long Star Museum out there and other uh, organizations bringing out simulators. We're going to have drone flying. Uh, we're, we uh, will cap it off by, uh, and some of it is interactive, right. so there's going to be hands-on uh, uh, things that they can do. And finally, we cap it off with a youth luncheon, and usually our guest speaker for that, the youth luncheon is a someone usually in their late 18s or teens mm -hmm. or early 20s who have so gone through the program and talk about their experience. Well, I may have to be absent for a few days next week. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> really does sound yes. Uh, so. uh, but I was going to just say, the other segment we have is called the Collegiate Series, where it's a three-day, basically, uh, seminar symposium for college students. Okay. And we, uh, they'll go through courses, uh, teaching them how to do resumes, how to do interviews. So it transfer them from the uh, college world into the work first force world. A lot of learning going on there, and that's what yes. Dr. Fontaine, you come in here. So for those who may not know about the aviation program at Texas Southern University, how long is that, how old is that program? What kind of things are you stressing? Great question. So the aviation program at TSU started actually in 1986. It started off as an airway science program that uh, manifested itself into an aviation management program. Three years ago, they decided to do a flight program. And so now TSU is a part 141 school with three aircraft, uh, two beautiful red bird simulators, and I think probably the finest aviation program in the country if you look at the infrastructure of how it's been set up. Um, we're very proud of it. And it's the only part 141 school in the, in the state of Texas where you can get a four-year degree. So we're, we're mighty proud about that. And one of the things you're doing, I mean, you've, I've, I've known, uh, full disclosure, I've known Terrence since I got here 19 years ago. We sat next to each other in the barbershop. So that's how I know him. You do a lot of things. You've flown for Continental for a number of years. Now you're doing the teaching part of it. And that plays a big role in what you're all doing because there's a lack of African-American pilots in the industry. If you look at uh, the percentages on a national basis, uh, African American pilots only make up 2.7 percent of all pilots in the in the world. And uh, if you look at it from a perspective of uh, other ethnicities, um, your Asians are at 2.7 percent, Hispanics, Latinos are at 4.8 uh, percent. And so we have work to do. We have space to go. There is a lot of opportunity. There's, there's going to be between now and 2035 a need for 600,000 pilots, 600,000 pilots. And uh, the, the, uh, the actual pay for pilots has gone up tremendously. And so I was looking at the scale the other day, first year captain on a wide body is now north of $300,000. Yeah. Okay. 
So, Captain, not a bad career path. No, no, not at all. Not, Captain Monroe, that means, brings up the, 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 in fact, how did you get started? I know you, you had a father who was in the Air Force and you kind of followed in his footsteps? I absolutely did. Uh, back when I uh, started, again, like most people, if you talk to in the pilot industry or the flying industry, they probably had a passion as a kid. And, and that was kind of the only path I knew. And fortunately, it worked for me. I was blessed, you know, I went into the Air Force. Uh, I was familiar with that lifestyle, and fortunately, my health was good enough, my eyesight and all that. But in some cases, I've, I've crossed many people who, for whatever reason, one reason or another, did not ha could not uh, meet the health issues mm -hmm. in the Air Force and had to pursue other avenues. If that had happened to me uh, back when I was going through this uh, system, I may not have been a pilot today because there was really no other avenue or something like the Organization of Black Aerospace Professionals that would have been able to guide me. I've gone to the website. I see all kinds of things on there. I noticed there was a solo um, opportunity for people. I was looking at the video right. of the planes taking off, the kids behind in the cockpit yep. learning the kinds of things that you need to learn to be a pilot. And it seemed to me that that's just one of the many programs that you offer as an organization. And maybe this kind of event that you're having is enough to kind of instill some incentive for people who want to do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, one of our most popular uh, events that we do is called the ACE Academy, which stands for uh, Aviation Career Education Academy. And we have over 30 of these academies that are done nationwide, Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands. I personally work with the one in uh, Puerto Rico, which I just completed my ninth year there. And uh, what these academies do, they take uh, students uh, between uh, 13 and 18 years of age, uh, put them through a week-long introduction to aviation. We have one right here in Houston uh, where they um, uh, we take them uh, on uh, tours of the airport. They see the tower. They see the radar control centers. They actually go up in airplanes. Uh, in some cases, they fly simulators. And on the very last day, uh, they actually go up in a real airplane. Some of them, for the first time, actually at the controls, obviously with a certified pilot. Absolutely, um. <laughs> certified pilot. <laughs> Terrence, what would you want people to, to, to know about what it takes to get into the business and the, the ability that they need to have to go for it? Don't, don't believe some of the stereotypes you hear about why you can't do it, why you can't do it. Uh, this is uh, something that's really, a, if it's a passion of yours, um, TSU's there, Sterling High School's there, there are folks in the community who have been there and understand how to get into the aviation arena, not just to be a pilot. There are other careers in aviation that we, uh, there are airport managers and dispatchers and air traffic controllers. Uh, we're, we're trying to get our kids focused on all of those opportunities. We just, uh, we just had an opportunity for some freshmen to come into to TSU. Uh, they're gonna go into either management or the pilot concentration, so they have a choice. And so it's up to us to make sure that they have that opportunity. That's what we're focused on. Well, I, I'm enjoying just looking at the website. I want to thank you both for coming in. I look forward to the activities next week. I'll be emceeing a gala next Friday. I'm looking forward to that as well. And the simulators. Try to get me out of the simulator. Oh, yeah. It's going to be tough. Come on down. <laughs> Appreciate you coming in. Yeah. Thank you for all you Thank do. you. Appreciate you. Hey, we're not done with the aviation topic. We now turn to women. And in this case, women in aviation. 